ellipses, as we said earlier, are oval shaped objects. Or they're literally uh, circles that have been stretched. And uh, so the uh, definition um, figured out many, many centuries ago, we're going to use this definition. Uh, it's a little more complicated than parabolas. An ellipse is a collection of all points. Remember, we call that the locus, not locust. Locusts are uh, obnoxious big bugs, kind of like grasshoppers. Locus. An ellipse is the locus of all points <laughs> such that the sum of the distances to two foci points is constant. All right, so I need basically two points, and literally you need two points in a string, you might say. Um, I'll explain that. All right, so here's a... Uh, uh, now I'm going to, this ellipse I'm going to center at the origin um, because I want to, again, I want to derive the algebra from this statement and this is an act of analytical geometry. We're using this information to uh, transform it into algebra. Alright, so, um, but I want to put the center at the origin just to keep it simple. And later we'll just we'll shift it around as need be. Okay, now there's um let me draw an ellipse. Okay. And this particular ellipse is wider along the x-axis and not as tall on the y-axis. So you might say it's uh, horizontally oriented. Okay. Now if you had one that was like this, that would be like very vertically oriented. And if you had one that was uh, like that, it's been rotated. And the rotations of ellipses all have x times y terms in their in their algebra. And, and that that's complicated. That that is complicated stuff. So we're going to stay away from that in this course. Um, you have the chop you have the chops to learn this, but you know there's only so much time we can build into these courses. So. Um, eventually, I might, I might supplement this with some videos on rotation. Uh, we'll see, as I can find time. All right, now, uh, here's my, <laughs> my best effort sketch out of an ellipse. Now, I'm going to call this um, point A, and this will be minus A. And here's the center. Center. And up here, I'll call this point B, and this is minus b down there. So these I believe are called the vertices of the ellipse. Those are the vertices of the ellipse. They, they kind of frame it. Alright, and the these mysterious points, the foci points. Let's say it's one's here and one's over there. And I'm going to call this c and minus c. There is a symmetry to this which uh, would be too hard to to really understand. Alright, so the um, C represents the length from the center to a foci. Foci is plural for focus. All right, now then, um, collection of all points such that the sum of the distances to two foci points is constant. So I'm going to put a generic point on this graph. There it is. And I'll call it xy. And if I calculate this distance, I'll call that D1, and this distance, that's D2, then what we know is that uh, D1 plus D2 equals to a constant. All right, so that kind of kind of maps out what that is. And uh, now, um, <laughs> my first question is, what's that constant? And, and we can figure that out. What is the constant? D1 plus D2. What what is that number? Now it's it's a we can't we don't have any numbers on this graph, but uh, we have letters. So what? But what is the length of the constant here? So pause the video, man. Think about that. Uh, really put your mind on this because you can figure this out. But it's when I ask this in classes, it it must be a, kind of a tough problem because not everybody thinks of it. So anyway, think about that. All right. If you got it, congratulations. If not. Uh, I guess uh, watch the show. Watch the show. Okay, so the constant is 2a. How do you know? Because if I use this point, which is on the ellipse, and I stretch this distance from the left foci all the way to here, and then this distance comes back to there. So I have 
one distance goes all the way out to A, the other one comes back to C, I really have this big amount plus this C amount. So when you add this plus that, you have the entire width of the, you might call it the major diameter of the ellipse, which in this case is going to be 2A, isn't it? A plus A. So in this problem, D1 plus D2 equals to 2A. Now, if the uh, parabola was vertically oriented, then um, D1 plus two, D2 will be 2B. It will be 2B because now the foci, the fo foci always have to lie on the major axis. And uh, so let's call this the major axis, the minor axis. We might call A the major radius and B the minor radius. All right, now uh, the book I'm teaching out of it switches A and B around. I'm going to be consistent. A, is, a always goes with X, B always goes with Y. So in case you're uh, one of my students learning out of our current book, uh, the book does a little bit different, but it, it doesn't matter. Okay, um, now then, so what, what, are we, what else can we figure out here? One thing, I don't know what the relationship is between A, B, and C. What's the relationship between A, B, and C? So uh, we can figure that out. It's actually a lot easier than it looks. Um, the, uh, and by the way, uh, <laughs> first time I taught this stuff was down at St. Pe Petersburg Junior College down in Florida. And uh, I had students in my class in college after it. I had a student who uh, his day job was cutting glass, had a glass company. And once in a while they would get an order for an oval mirror and, or an oval piece of glass. And so he came to me the one night, we just started talking about these. I said, Look, uh, here's how I cut these mirrors. You know, the boss sends me and says, Well, we need a, a mirror, let's say it's uh, 60 inches tall and 24 inches wide. I just make it up numbers. And so he says, uh, what I do is I put uh, two nails in a board, big piece of plywood, that's the foci, side, and I have this string I attach to them, and, and I keep fiddling with where the, how long the string is and where to put these nails in order to get the dimensions of the, of the mirror. He says, it takes me about a half hour fiddling around, I, you know, trying to figure out where to put the nails, where to put the, um, how long to, to, to move the string. And, uh, and indeed, if you, if you attached a string to two thumbtacks or nails, you could push up on the string with a pencil and then just kind of roll it this way. And, and because the length of the string is constant and this is fixed, if you tighten this with a pencil and go like this, you'll get the top half of the ellipse. And then you can move it down here and get the bottom half of the ellipse. That's how he... He uh, sketched those out, and then he could cut the mirrors. He said, it takes me at least a half hour to figure this out. I said, is there a quicker way? He says, oh yeah, this is a quicker way. And uh, so we went through all this stuff, and he was so happy. He said, oh God, the boss is going to love this. It's only going to take me 30 seconds now. <laughs> so, power of math in motion there. All right, now, i got to figure out what was, what was I doing. Oh, what is the relationship between A, B, and C? Is that a good question? You bet. Because um, and here's how we can how we can get that. If I consider this point on the ellipse, then here this right hand triangle is a right triangle, and I've got um, this length is b, that length is c, and <laughs> this is d2. Well, if d2 is equal to D1, which it would be right up here, D1 equals D2, when they are equal, then they're both equal to A. So that's A. So looking at that triangle there, we see that, uh, use Pythagoras, B squared plus C squared equals A squared. B squared plus C squared equals to A squared. Isn't that beautiful? All right. So um, there's how A, B, and C relate to each other. And, and usually the way we write it, we'll uh, solve for c squared. c squared is a squared minus b squared. Now, um, if your ellipse is like this, then it's going to be reversed. c squared will be b squared minus a squared. So just um, write them so that the bigger number's here, and then you'll, you'll be okay. You'll get c squared. All right. So, so far we have fleshed out uh, 
two really key pieces of information. Uh, D1 plus D2 is equal to 2A, and C squared for this type of ellipse is A squared minus B squared. All right, now, I want to come up with the equation of an ellipse and um, that, that fits this, this picture. So let, let me erase a little bit of the clutter, and then we'll, uh, we'll get this set up algebraically. Well, you're about to see a lot of algebra, and uh, in, my, in my regular classes, I just say, look, uh, um, don't worry about copying all this, all these calculations down, but, but do pay attention. Watch how I do all this, and uh, see if you can get something out of this. So that'd probably be my advice here. Um, all right, because we don't do this very often, but uh, this is a, a fantastic problem. What is the equation of the ellipse using this information? And uh, so my first order of business is getting d1 plus d2 equals 2a. So I'm going to drop a perpendicular here, forming right triangles, and I'll use Pythagorean theorem. Now, the uh, height of the triangle of each of these is going to be the distance from the x-axis up to y. So how long is that? That's just y, isn't it? That's y. Okay. Uh, how wide is this base? Well, this is x, then uh, if c is larger than x, then this is going to be c minus x. Okay. So the difference in those two values, you know, when you subtract in one dimension, you're calculating the distance between two numbers. And um, now, if, if I had my point over here, I'd probably write x minus c, because uh, x would be larger than c. But it turns out when you apply the Pythagorean theorem, you square all this anyway in the negatives will disappear. So, all right, so for that triangle, I have um, y squared plus c minus x squared equals d2 squared. So, y squared plus c minus x squared equals to d2 squared. Got that? Now then, uh, for the other triangle, this um, distance is d1, the height is still y, about the base? Well, this, this length is c, that length is x, so this is x plus c, isn't it? From here to here, c plus x. So if I fill that in, I get um, y squared plus x plus c squared equals to d1 squared. There we go. All right, now then, um, so I want to erase all this so I can do all this algebra. Uh, I, I, I know that d1 plus d2 is 2a. And in this particular one, c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. So I'm going to erase all this, everything below, and um, solve these this system of equations. Now, my goal is to eliminate the c's. I want the equation of ellipse in terms of a and b. <laughs> so my, my equation, I want it to have x and y, because it's an equation, and uh, I want my constants to be a, which is the major radius, and b, which is the, the minor radius. Uh, actually, that will work for the uh, tall ellipses also. That same equation works out there. And it's a beautiful equation. It's, it's amazing how all this uh, <laughs> rather complicated algebra will simplify it down nicely. So. Uh, I'm going to erase this, sit back, enjoy the show, but pay attention, pay attention, this is good for you. Okay, so you're going to hear me talk through the logic of figuring this out. And what am I trying to figure out? I want to combine all this stuff together in a way that I have one equation with just x's, y's, a's, and b's. Can it be done? Of course it can. And I find out that as you work through this, you see it's kind of long, algebraically, but I find in, uh, most of the time when I do things involving tons of algebra, trying to figure out something, um, very often the algebra simplifies down to a rather beautiful result. And that, this is not an exception to that at all. All right, so how do I get uh, A into the equation? Uh, well, I need to take the square root. So I have D1 plus D2. So um, D1 plus D2. Well, D1 is going to be the square root of this. So it's the square root of y squared plus x plus c squared, okay? And then d2 is the square root of y squared plus c minus x 
squared. And that equals to d1 plus d2 equals 2a. All right, so let's get some one thing really clear here. I cannot simplify these square roots. This is not equal to y plus x plus c. Bad algebra. Very bad algebra. You cannot distribute a square root across the sum of squares. It would be like saying that the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared equals to 3 plus 4, which is 7. This is actually equal to the square root of 25, which is 5. And so you cannot go from here to here by just wiping off the square root, the squares with the square root. All right, so that does not simplify nicely. Sorry about that. Okay, now then. Um, so I'll have to uh, <laughs> take another approach. And I think it's probably simpler if I move one of these square roots to the other side. Then I'm going to square both sides. So I'll rewrite this as the square root of y squared plus x plus c squared equals to 2a minus square root y squared plus c minus x squared. All right, so I didn't do anything except I just moved that to the right side. Now I'm going to square this side and square that side. Okay, and that will allow us to get rid of one square root. Okay, so I, I don't know a simpler way to do this problem. I don't think there is. So, but when I square the left side, square the square root, it will eliminate the square root. So I'll end up with y squared plus x plus c squared. Now over here, I have 2a minus the square root and 2a minus the square root. All right, so in shorthand, that's what I'm multiplying together. And when you fold that out, you get 4a squared. And then you'll have minus 2a square root minus 2a square root. So that's minus 4a square root. And then you'll have plus square root squared. So this is sort of the, the template here. And um, when I foil that out, so I'm going to erase this and actually do that kind of mentally, but we'll end up with 4a squared minus 4a times the square root, and then plus that stuff under the square root. Okay, so let's, let me write that out. All right, so we have um, 4a squared minus 4a square root y squared plus c minus x squared and then plus we square the square root we have y squared plus parentheses c minus x squared there we go and we have our first simplification already very nice let's um let's subtract y squared from both sides okay and now what now what um I think I would like to bring this over here and also subtract 4a squared. Now nah, I got that backwards, don't I? Uh, oof, 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 oof. Nah, that'll be okay. All right. So um, I have this term, x plus c squared. Yeah, I'm going to change it because I have a trick up I see I just thought of. I, I did this the other day in class. I didn't spot this. I'm going to write x plus c as c plus x. All right. I'll see if this helps me. <laughs> okay. It, it may not. All right. And then I'm going to subtract this term, minus c minus x squared. And then I'll subtract 4a squared, minus 4a squared. And that's equal to negative 4a square root y squared plus c minus x squared. There we go. So I just rearranged the terms, and you probably know where I'm headed. I'm going to square both sides of this equation. I'll square both sides of the equation in order to get rid of that last square root. And then it's going to be a lot easier once we get rid of that last square root. So, all right, I'm going to uh, erase everything but this. <laughs> and uh, and, and I'll, I'll go up here and, and continue working. So you can reasonably be wondering, well, why don't we just look up the equation? Why do we have to do all this stuff? Well, that's the purpose. We can just look it up, can't we? Uh, yeah, I guess you could. That's the Google mentality. Let's Google it, okay? And, um, you know, they, people don't get paid a lot for looking up stuff on Google. Uh, but they do get paid for thinking and reasoning and figuring out problems. That's, that's what you want, where you want to be. So let's plow on with this, all right? It's absolutely worth it. And I'm glad I did this because I've never done this before when I saw this problem. I just uh, spotted that I think I have a really slick 
technique here for simplifying this part. Okay, you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed. So, uh, well, I hope you're amazed. Anyway, so here's what I saw. I think, well, this is this is a difference of two squares. You know, if you had uh, x squared minus y squared, that factors as x plus y times x minus y, doesn't it? It factors. And so, if I do that, then I've got um, <laughs> that term. C plus X. Now, let, me, let me write it with uh, brackets here because I want this to be real clear. All right, so if I factor just this part here, it's going to be um, this plus this times that minus that without the, without the exponents of 2. All right, so I have C plus X um, plus C minus X. And then I've got uh, c plus x minus c minus x. All right, so this is the difference of two squares factored using those. All right, so um, in just simplifying this part of the equation, look what we got here. I have c plus c, that's 2c, and there's no x here, the x's cancel. 2c times, and this is going to be c plus x minus c plus x, so minus c plus x, so that's 2c here, and I've got the c's cancel, I got 2x times 2x, so I end up with 4cx. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so 4cx. All right, now I'm going to... Um, Make some room here and we'll, we'll go from there. I really like that shortcut. Now you can, you can square this out, you can square that out, you can subtract them, and you'll see it still get 4CX. So this part here, like I just showed, works out to be 4 times C times X. So I'm just going to erase this, put 4CX, because at this point, it looks like we can, we can divide everything by 4, can't we? So let's divide everything by 4. And then... Um, and we'll go from there. So it's starting to look pretty good. So now I've got CX minus A squared equals to minus A times the square root of Y squared plus C minus X squared. Okay, now if you're wondering, well, aren't we supposed to be getting rid of the C's? Yes, we're going to get rid of the C's, but not quite ready to. Okay, uh, it actually be kind of complicated because that C is going to be a square root in itself. So bear with me on this. The C's will disappear. And I'm going to now square both sides to get rid of the uh, square root. And when I square this side, this will become positive A squared. And then that square root will disappear. So I have, um, over here I've got cx minus a squared times cx minus a squared equals to, when this, I forgot to write the square there, that gets squared is a squared, and then I've got, um, I'll put that in brackets, y squared plus c minus x parentheses squared. There we go. Alright, so let's uh, multiply all that stuff out. And uh, believe me, I've seen worse on this problem. I, I like those shortcuts I'm, I'm finding here. Okay, um, so to foil this out, I've got c squared x squared minus a squared cx minus a squared, squared cx. So there's two of those, minus 2 a squared cx, and then plus a the fourth equals to a squared parentheses or bracket, y squared plus, now it goes c minus x times c minus x, you'll get c squared minus 2cx plus x squared. Now then, let's, um, let's just multiply all that out and see if we can simplify it. So I got, uh, let's see, c squared x squared minus 2a squared cx plus a to the fourth equals to a squared y squared plus a squared c squared 
minus 2a squared cx plus a squared x squared. All right, so I multiply a squared through on the right, and let's see what we, we can do here. Now, uh, to me, it's a relief that we can cancel the 2a squared cx term because we have a negative 2a squared cx on both sides. So these will subtract off. Now, that's very nice. And do we have anything else we can simplify here? Um, well, no, <laughs> uh, we don't. But the, um, I don't think we do. No, nothing else uh, cancels off here. But now is the time to replace c squared with a squared minus b squared up there. All right, so now, it only, c squared only appears in two places. So let me, let me write that in. So I have a squared minus b squared times x squared plus a to the fourth equals to a squared y squared plus a squared c squared again is a squared minus b squared plus a squared x squared. Oh, got all that? Okay. I know, it's, it's, kind of, it's still messy. It's still messy. I've, uh, I've done worse with this, i got to tell you. Um, okay, so if I, if I multiply this out, then we'll, we'll take a look at what we got. So I have a squared x squared minus b squared x squared plus a to the fourth equals to a squared y squared plus a to the fourth minus a squared b squared uh, plus a squared x squared. Okay, so what can we do with this? Well, it looks like a to the fourth appears on both sides, so we can cancel a to the fourth. That's good. And uh, what else here? I have a squared and x squared on both sides, so I can subtract this term off both sides. That disappears. And Anything else we can do? I think that's it. We're down to three terms, which I'm going to erase the board, put it up there, and then uh, we're almost done with this problem. So it's a, it's a wonderful problem. Now, give me a moment. I'll do some erasing and we'll recopy this. Well, I erased the clutter, and this was our last line we had. And if I just copy it up here, I got minus b squared x squared equals to a squared y squared minus a squared b squared. There we go. And you know what? I got them right where I want them. Because um, what I'm going to do is bring the x squared and y terms, y squared terms together. Now I'll take this constant, a squared b squared is going to be a constant because a and b are constants. I'm going to move this over to here. It'll become a positive. Move that over there. That'll become a plus. And so uh, together, these two terms will be a, um, I'm sorry, b squared, I want to write it in this order, b squared, x squared, plus a squared, y squared. So that's pushing that over, that's this side. Okay. And then this comes over, and I have positive a squared, b squared. So it has simplified down enormously. I achieved my goal of finding an equation with just x's and y's in it, and a's and b's. And we can figure out C from that little formula there. All right, so one last step is traditional to have a 1 over here. So I'm going to divide by A squared, B squared, each term. And then uh, we can behold the, the beauty of this. It's a really a pretty, uh, pretty result here. Um, in the first term, the B squareds cancel. So I've got X squared over A squared. Here the a squareds cancel, plus y squared over b squared equals to 1. And there we are. This is the equation of an ellipse with the center at the origin. And, and actually, it doesn't matter if it's wide or tall. That, that would depend on the values of a and b. And uh, so there you go. Um, that's the equation of the ellipse. So I'm going to um, write the more general one with uh, center at the h comma k, and then we'll start uh, looking at all these over and do some graphing. So here we are. The equation of an ellipse with center at h comma k, and foci with length equal to c is x minus h parentheses squared over a squared plus y minus k parentheses squared over b squared 
equals to 1, where c squared is, it's either a squared minus b squared or b squared minus a squared, depending on which one is larger. So I pair the a with x, the way I do this, and b with y. So a is the horizontal radius and b is the vertical radius. Uh, the textbook I teach out of uh, makes the larger one a and the smaller one b, so sometimes it's a and b are switched here. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but I think this makes more, more logic to me, so it's the way I've always taught it. Um, Okay, so there we are, and uh, so this has been, I took the one that centered the origin and we translated it, moved it H units in the horizontal and K units in the vertical, and here's our, our template for an ellipse. And um, there we go. We have one other, I, one other thing I want to talk about is called the eccentricity of the ellipse. The uh, eccentricity, and, and, and astronomers use this, this uh, concept, eccentricity. I think I eccentricity. There you go. Eccentricity um, is letter E equal to C over A or C over B. Now that's also going to depend on whether if if A is greater than B, then it's C over A, and if B is greater than A, then it's C over B. Just like over here, but. Eccentricity is a ratio, and I can explain it better once I got a nice picture up there. But uh, eccentricity is a description of how stretched out the uh, the oval is. Okay, and uh, so for example, um, this ellipse here has a large eccentricity, large e. Now that e is not the number e from college algebra. You know, 2.718, 2818, it's E for eccentricity. And a ellipse that's almost circular has a small uh, eccentricity. All right, so that's the idea. And uh, eccentricity, by the way, is between um, 0 and 1. Uh, it can't equal to 1. I think literally equal 1, I think, would be a parabola. It would literally break the... Um, ellipse. But an eccentricity of zero would mean a circle. So, okay, so I'm going to uh, erase all this and let's do a couple of graphs.